Give me Matthew's gospel. I'm not going to preach it because I, I don't. Y'all messed that up. Matthew's gospel chapter four. Verse 11. And I want to show you what's happening today. I want to show you what's happening today. See, some of y'all read too fast. I want to show you what, what God is doing today. You ready? Let's read it together. Ready? Read. Then stop. Then means something has come to a conclusion. It means we're getting ready to move on from something. It's a transitional period. Then the devil leaveth him. Then what had been allowed to come upon him was then assigned to leave him. Then the devil leaveth him. Tell your neighbor now, that devil leaveth me. The struggle was ordained but for a set time. Then, the devil leaveth him and look. Behold means to look. Because if you don't look, you're not going to know what's now around you. You're going to think it's still what it was. All you know is you're surrounded. But you don't know the company has shifted. Then the devil leaveth him. And pay attention here. Angels came. And ministered unto him. Tell three people in your area it's a new day. It's a new day. I saw this. I saw this. I, I can't preach it. But sit down and give me five minutes. Let me tell you this. I saw that we have come to the conclusion of our year. We've come to the conclusion of our year, but it has not been a year. Uh We've come to the conclusion or to the completion of a year that has not been 365 days. September was the beginning of our spiritual year, 5784. It is the year of the open door. It is the year of the open door within the door. It is the door that leads to a door that takes me into a greater place. January began our prophetic year. It is the spirit of excellence. So in September, we came into open doors. In January, we were called to embrace excellence. Now here we are in April. And we're called to a new day. There is no more year celebration until September again, which is the beginning of another spiritual year. So between now and September, you get to reap the benefits of open doors, excellence, and a new day. Yeah. You get to live from now to September in open doors, excellence, 
and a new day. The new day commands an end and a beginning. The end of days and the beginning of days. This new day is a day of elevation and promotion. Say elevation and promotion. Say elevation and promotion. Say it like you want it. Elevation and promotion. Elevation to election. Scripture says, let your calling, make your calling and your election sure. It is your call at salvation. Election is the grace to be saved. You had to be elected before you were called. Otherwise, you would have been called into something that was not legal for you. So he says, you have been elevated to your election. What does that mean, Sheena? Be saved. Don't try no more. Just be saved. You have been granted access to salvation. You have it. Be it. It's not hard. It's only a challenge to the parts of us that don't want to be saved. So when struggle comes with your calling and your election is flesh. The only thing we can do with flesh is crucify it. So when you start struggling with your salvation, you start fasting. Y'all gonna make me preach. When you start struggling with your call, not to fivefold ministry, but to salvation. When you start wrestling with whether you're really saved or not and whether this is really real or not, you need to turn that plate over, turn that TV off, lay that phone on its face, and get in the word of God and spend some time crucifying your flesh. We have been promoted to purpose from production to performance. Today, Many of us come off of the assembly line. It's presentation time. I just said it to you. It's time for you to contribute your part. It's time for you to be who you are. Stop trying to be what you see. Stop trying to be what you respect and admire. Be who you are. Who am I? What are you anointed to do? What do you think about? What are you frustrated about? What every time that goes wrong, you get mad. That's probably something you're connected to in purpose because you have a passion about it. Ooh. Purpose brings along passion. If you don't have no passion, don't do it. Because it's not a part of your purpose. Because if there's no passion there, no money will come. You will never make money doing what you're just doing. You'll never be wealthy and rich just doing it to be doing it. You've got to have a passion. Your hands have got to itch to do it. You gotta go to sleep and wake up thinking about it. You gotta plan it all day and all night. You got it's got to be a part of you to the degree that when you're not doing it, you don't feel like you're measuring up. Let me let me close this. Uh, the gifts and callings and anointings of God. The Holy Ghost said this to me in the shower yesterday. He said, the gifts, anointings, and callings of God are not for sale. Jesus. You ain't got enough money. Elon Musk does not have enough money to buy an anointing, a gifting, or a calling. It cannot be bought. However, they do come with a price tag. What is the cost of my anointing? 
What is the cost of my gifting? What is the cost of my, of my uh, a calling? You cannot operate on a level you have not conquered. See, it, it's different in God. In God, you must conquer it before you operate in it. When the devil gives you something, he allows you to operate in it before you've conquered it. So you get the reward before the process. Anything come too easy may not be from God. Y'all going to sleep on me? And, and, and so this anointing that we have, this calling that we have, this costs us a lot. It costs me my normality. I can't be normal with this on me. I cannot be of my bloodline perpetuation with this on me. Because the way my blood deals with stuff will destroy this on me. So I can't even be me. Y'all quiet. Y'all make me think you don't understand. I, I, I can't have the attitude that is common for me with this level of calling. I got to deny myself. Not just of having, but of thinking. I got to take on a new mind, a new mindset that will accompany and not contradict my calling. Many of us are in struggle because we have lived in mental and emotional contradiction to our spiritual declaration. We want all that God has for us, but we don't want process. We don't want to be told no. We don't want to be ignored. We don't want to be rejected. We don't want to be pushed aside. We just want to shine and do well. It don't come like that. The pain of Christ's suffering is referred to as his passion. How you come in with your passion? Have you realized that it is the necessary development for where you're going, not the response from where you've been? I'm going through this because I'm going somewhere. Ah, I'm called to something greater and I can't have greater until I conquer this. I'm in Deuteronomy chapter 7 now. So God says there's seven nations that are in your promised land that when you get there, you're going to have to fight. He says, but I'm going to deliver them to you. Whatever God delivers to me is pre-defeated. He only wants me to do to it what he already did. And if he lives in me, it ain't hard for him and me to whoop what he already whooped. He says, when you come to another level, the first experience on the next level is warfare. Once you get up out the floor, for I'm going to another level. Yeah. As soon as the song ends, hell comes. And maybe we've not been taught this enough. Because we think we're going to leave out on the level. No, you've got to conquer whatever is on the level. And you don't know what that is until it attacks you. And you start asking yourself stuff like, 
why am I acting like this? Why am I thinking? What is going on with me? You've graduated, but you don't want to fight. It says, it says, it says, uh, uh, the trial, the next level is the trial of promotion and elevation. The trial. See, we used to talk about tests and trials. Now we talk about is money and wealth. Uh, um, the, the trial that comes is coming to stretch us to endure the stress of the next level. I, I got to be stretched to endure the stress or the stress will destroy me. And God didn't elevate me to kill me. So maybe my elevation is delayed because I refuse to stretch. I don't want to stretch. I want the trial to be diminished. Shrink that. Don't stretch me. He said, if I do that, then that can only come to your level. But I'm trying to bring you to its level. You want elevation. You want promotion. You want a fresh anointing. You want another level. It's going to come with a fight. I'm sorry, you're not shouting. We must be sanctified to endure the temptation of the next level. We must be pulled close enough to God that we will not be pulled away from God for what's coming to try to get us. So, so when you're getting ready to be elevated in ministry, you probably have to go through some class training that you don't feel like it or don't have time for because you really don't really need this. But what's getting ready to come at you, if you're not in this cocoon, it's going to have access to you. <laughs> See, the reason uh, MTI has you, MIT, Minister's Training Institute, Minister, whatever it is, the reason it has you reading so much is because you're coming to a level that something else is going to come at you that if you don't have that in you, you'll have nothing to resist it. Next thing you know, you'll be talking about, I, I am of the earth. You be talking that strange talk because you're looking for truth outside of truth. But what we'll do is reject the price and still want the prize. We must be secured to endure the crisis of the next level. You got to have your feet cemented. So when the crisis comes, you can't move. Even when you want to. You, you don't know how many times I've resigned. But my feet wouldn't move. Because they're anchored. You don't know how many times I didn't want to, but my feet wouldn't move because I was anchored. It's not that I always felt like it. It's that I had no other choice. Alleviate yourself of illegal options. You got to learn how to say that's not an option for me and not raise it in your time of struggle. I'm gone. We must be strengthened to endure the warfare of the next level. We must be settled to endure the fleeting emotions of current perception that do not belong on the next level. 
In, in other words, I have the capacity, I belong to God, I shall not be moved, I win, and I'm over it. I'm over quitting. I'm over giving up. I'm over throwing in the towel. I don't even carry towels no more. I use handkerchiefs because I don't want the temptation. I'm over not loving my brothers and my I'm over that now. Some of you are so busy being over each other. And you think that's holy. Didn't he say love thy brother as thy so you over yourself? That's secularism. That's the way the world functions. That's the way the world thinks. But because our nose lives in the world. Here's the announcement. In all of this, it is Sunday, April 7th. It is in the afternoon. I won't say what time. Y'all just, just give me today. It's in the afternoon. And I have a major announcement. It's not individual, it's corporate. Here's the corporate announcement. We've passed the test. When I heard God say it, I almost tore my shower up. He said, we have passed. Some of you are failing, but you got in on the curve. We have passed corporately. Say it another way. The vision has passed the test. What does that mean? Jesus led into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. He's hungry because he had been fasting. So he's in a physical state. He's in a mental state. He's in an emotional state. The Holy Spirit comes and gets Jesus and takes him into the wilderness and delivers him to temptation. He delivers him to the devil. He delivers him to the devil and he leaveth him. He left him with the devil. He left him with the devil to be tempted. He didn't stay there and whisper in his ear. He left him there hungry, emotional, psychologically messed up, without the Holy Spirit present, to be tempted of the devil. You cannot be left anywhere without the Holy Ghost. Because he no longer comes upon you only. He lives within you. So whatever I'm going through, I have the privilege of the voice of the Spirit of God in me, giving me direction. But Jesus... was left alone which means he had to have enough in him to survive tell your neighbor if the Holy Ghost went on a hiatus I still got enough in me If he don't speak in the middle of my storm, I still got my memory. I know what he said. I got enough in me. Some of you are waiting on goosebumps and you're waiting on a feeling and you're waiting on a quake and a jake when you got enough in you. I have not lost my mind. I know what he said to me. I know, I know he said, let's go over to the other side. I'm tripping right now, but I just had to remember. He said, let us go over. So let me go to sleep in this storm because some, 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 some of the new saints 
can't make it if they don't get a feeling. But the old saints walk by faith. And not by, we ain't got to feel nothing. In fact, we could feel left, abandoned, rejected, and thrown away. And we still going to walk by faith. Because this ain't about what I feel. This is about what I believe. What I believe is not what I think. It is the principles that I've established in my life. So if you're going to make it in this hour, you're going to have to get out of your feelings. And you're going to have to walk by principle. I don't pray because I feel the anointing. I pray, I pray because man ought to always pray. So that we won't faint. I, I don't fast because I need to lose weight. I fast because I recognize my flesh is getting out of control. It's coming up, and before it comes out, I got to beat it down. You have to fast when you hear Eddie Murphy talking in your ear. Because you didn't put too much of him in you. You got too much of Cat Williams in you. You got too much in you. You've enjoyed it. The, the, the thing was wonderful. You got too much Medea in you. And now you're seeing yourself almost manifesting what you've taken in. Now you got to consecrate. Let me beat this stuff down. Lord, I'm, I better go three days because... I heard her talking in my ear. Him, her, her, him, whatever it is. I, I heard it talking in my ear. I, I'm, I'm testifying. I heard Cat one day. Somebody said something to me. And Soprano kicked in. And he was telling me what to say. My palm got long. And I said, wait, cat can't talk through me. Y'all don't want to testify. But if I'm full of cat. Pastor Miles used to say, what's in you going to come out of you? I said, well, let me go and touch this TV off and get in this word and, and suppress and push out and get rid of and sanctify not that I can't ever listen, but when that thing get to rising up and I get emotional preaching and want to say something because he. See, that's how preachers cuss because we entertain too much of it. And then we come from carnality to holy and we have not consecrated. And then y'all get excited because it gives you permission to say what we said. Let me cuss up in here in a high emotional moment. Offering will double. Because the saints, yes, he's real. No, he's carnal. And need to consecrate. Need to go before God, lay on the altar, and say, God, get it out of me. The new day. The new day is two days in one. It is the end of days. I'm done. And the beginning of days. The end of days. And the beginning of days. The end of days causes an audience to cry. The beginning of days causes another audience to celebrate. The end of days causes one audience to feel lost. The beginning of days causes another audience to have found. It's the beginning of days and the end of days. Huh. The angels come to diaconio him. From the word that we get, deacon or deaconate, diaconia. Deacon, it means to serve. 
The angels now come to serve him, to refresh him from the effects of the trial. How are they refreshing him? They're speaking well to him. They're speaking well to him about him. They're reminding him not of what he's been through, but who he was the whole time. I need somebody in my life in this season to speak well to me. I've had enough criticism. I, I've been dogged out enough. I've had enough memory of my failures. I need somebody to say, but you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And you're still anointed to do what you do. You're still called. I know you fell short, but you're still called. And let me remind you of who you are. I know it's been a rough season, but every time you open your mouth, God honors it. I know it's been a tight season, but every time you dance, heaven shifts. I know they come to refresh him from the effects of the trial they come to restore him from the residue of the trial what is this restoration they provide for his needs they make him an angel food cake the angels say we know you're starving Ain't no need in us serving your spirit and leaving your belly empty. So they start ministering to all of his needs. Tell your neighbor, I got some angels that's getting ready to start ministering to all my needs. Wherever I've been in lack, wherever I've been deficient, wherever I've been insufficient, whatever I had to give up to get to the level, he's getting ready to replenish me. He's getting ready to restore me. He's getting ready to put me in an hour of restoration. And it's going to be angels that do it. Prove it, Bishop. Oh, be careful because you entertain angels unaware. God's getting ready to send an angel to embrace you. And you'll never see them again. God's going to send an angel to minister a word to you. And you'll never see them again. Angels are coming. Y'all don't believe that. Angels are coming to minister to you because man has been insufficient. Man has become so self-centered that God has to send angels in man's stead. To rebuild his people after the trial. What is the first thing you do after a good storm? You go and eat well. And after you eat well, what do you do? You sleep well. You go get you a steak. You go get you a, a lobster. You go get you a, 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 a sockeye salmon or something. You go get you something wonderful and you sit down and you treat yourself. Tap, tap, tap your neighbor. I'm trying to get out of here. Tap your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm getting ready to treat myself. I ain't taking you with me because I ain't paying for you. But I'm getting ready to go sit at a fine restaurant and spend $200 on myself. I'm going to have an appetizer. I'm going to have... Oh God, I'm going to have tea. I'm going to have water. I'm going to have some sparkling cider. Watch out now. I'm going to have me a good meal. I'm going to have some dessert and coffee at the end. And I'm going to treat myself because I made it. And if don't nobody else celebrate me, I've learned how to celebrate my. The angels come finally to renew his mind from the imaginations that Satan provided for his instability. In the time of trial, Satan provides imaginations to present to you instability so that you will now doubt what you knew. You will now put a question mark where you used to have an explanation point. Because Satan dealt me an imagination and I saw it. I looked at it and I believed it. I went through a season in my life some years ago. Uh, I felt death. It was 
constantly around. And it would talk to me. And I'd be driving. I was driving a navigator back then. And I'd be driving in my navigator. And death would say, drive into that tree. I'm like, who are you talking to? And I keep driving. And then you go and you see a ditch. And he'll say, your tire going to blow. You're going to fall off into that ditch. And you're going to die right in this truck by yourself. And if you're not careful, you'll see the image. And when you start seeing the image, you won't see the road. And all, thank you, Mother Williams, for preaching with me. He's only trying to distract you with images of a nation that contradict what God said. God said, I can't die until I preached on all seven continents. That's the promise. That's one of the promises on my life. I cannot die until I preached on all seven continents. So why is death talking to me? Because death is a sign to escort me to my next level. So when I told death, shut up the word of God over my life is A, B, C, and D. I assume the level that I had been brought to because I conquered. You're hearing from the enemy and running to God. Or running to your friends. And you're not running back to the enemy to say, shut up. Stop talking to me. Get out of my ear. Because the word of God over my life is this. I shall not. You got to stop running to God. Because God says, I already spoke concerning that. Now you're leaving God without an answer because you have the answer, but you want assurance. He said, when you were a child, I treated you as a child. But your tongue is too mature for me to have to baby you. You speak in tongues too pretty for me to have to come and rub you in the middle of the night. I remember when Jerron would cry. After a while, he was clean. He was full. I said, it's good for his lungs. He hollered until he went to sleep. And then he learned hollering don't move me. God is trying to teach you. Them little tears don't move him no more. That, that fit don't move him no more. You're going to have to graduate from that. You're going to have to get his attention another way. Because you leave in church not showing up. That don't move God no more. He'll say, stay at home. Oh, God, you don't care. Yeah, I care, but I ain't about to come down to that level. I'm gone. It's the beginning of days. It's the beginning of days. It's the beginning of days. What is the, what is the beginning of days? What are the days? It's the days of clarity. Ephesians 1, 17. It's the days of clarity. I didn't give read these scriptures. So she's going to have to find them quick. Get her a mic right quick. Ephesians 1, 17 and 18. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, go to Psalm 139, 23. I'm going to read this one. It is the days of clarity that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. You're getting ready to have clarity. You're getting ready to be clear that this is for me and that is not. You're getting ready to be clear that that belongs to me and that does not. You're getting ready to be clear that what God has for me, it is for me and can't no devil in hell or human on earth take it from me. You're getting ready to be clear that regardless of who acts what kind of way, the promises of God are still yea and a man in Christ Jesus. You're getting ready to have clarity. 
Secondly, purity. Psalm 139, 23, and 24, you got it? Psalm 139, 23. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. God, search me every day. Search me all day long. I want purity. I want purity. I, I want purity. I'm tired of contaminated thinking. I'm tired of, of mixing the culture of Christ and the culture of my genealogy together. I want to be pure, oh God. I want to deny what I need to deny and embrace what I need to embrace. God, make me pure. But not only a day of purity, but it is also a day of wealth. Um, Philippians 4 and 19 um, says, but my God um, shall supply uh, all of my need um, according to his riches and glory uh, by Christ Jesus. Um, lean on your neighbor uh, and say, neighbor, uh, my supply uh, has just shown up. Um, tell your neighbor, uh, my package um, has just been delivered. Uh, some of you know, because um, FedEx um, will deliver your package anywhere. Uh, got your stuff at the neighbor's house. Um, got your stuff at the leasing office. Um, got your stuff somewhere else. Um, and you're looking in the right place um, for something that was put somewhere else. Uh, but lean on your neighbor uh, and say, neighbor, uh, my package uh, is coming to my address. Um, I'm getting ready to have um, whatsoever I desire uh, in Christ. Um, it is a day of wealth. Um, but not only uh, is it a day of wealth, um, but he said, tell them uh, it's a day of status. Um, tell your neighbor status. Um, God's getting ready to raise my name. I told you on Wednesday night, uh, God's getting ready to put weight uh, back in your name. Uh, whatever your last name is, uh, your credit score uh, is getting ready to creep on up uh, in increments. Uh, and God uh, is going to put weight uh, back on your name. Uh, it's going to be something uh, to be of the Williams. Uh, it's going to be something uh, to be of the Jamesons. Uh, it's going to be something uh, to be of the Murrays. Uh, it does not matter uh, what has been our history. Uh, what really matters uh, is what is my prophecy. Uh, and I heard uh, that God has some good things uh, in store for me. Uh, I heard uh, that God uh, is getting ready to bless me uh, beyond my imagination. Um, what do you mean, Bishop? Uh, now unto him uh, who is able uh, to do exceeding uh, abundantly uh, and above all uh, that we can ask or think. Uh, tell your neighbor, uh, I'm coming up. Uh, in status uh, they're getting ready to know who i am uh, i'm not forming it uh, but it's forming me uh, the glory uh, on my life uh, is getting ready to be visible uh, even to the heathen uh, shout yes uh, god uh, is gonna have people uh, coming to me in the grocery store uh, Come on, can you pray for me? I don't even know you, but you see glory on my life. There you are in the shopping mall and somebody walking up to you and saying, remember me when you talk to God and you're saying, what is it about me that makes them know that I'm saved? It's glory. It's glory resident on you. It's a glow on your face. I'm not sad. I'm not depressed. I'm not mad. Because God is good. And his mercy. And 
do it forever and his truth to all generations I got glow on me I got glow on me and my status is changing my status is shifting I'm on the come up I'm on the come up don't be mad don't hate come up with me it's gonna cost me but I gotta go I can't live on this level anymore I gotta go I gotta go I gotta go I gotta go Say yeah Say yes My status Is coming to another level He said you Judah Shall no more Be time forsaken Nor shall your land Be called desolate Anymore But you shall be called Hephzeba And your land Shall be called Beulah God Is raising my status God 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 I gotta go He's raising my status so we end where we began the last thing in the new day is healing he said what I'm gonna do in the new day is heal you until you're healed and when you get healed healing will fight sickness when you get healed healing will redress will fight and will reject sickness throw your hands up and say Lord oh Lord heal me until healing works on the inside of me heal me till I don't have to get sick but when sickness comes healing will fight healing will resist I don't have to get in the line I just take a nap and I wake up healed I just eat a good meal and I get up healed I just have a good conversation and I walk away healed because healing is working in me healing is working in me it's a new day it's a new day it's a new day it's a new day happy 25 it's a new day we gotta go but it's a new day I shall not be what I was I'm grown up another level I'm matured to another dimension it's a new day I'll see you on the other side but it's a new day and I I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. If you wanna go, come go with me. Cause we're moving into a new day. We're walking into a new day. We're pressing into a new day. I'm ready.
new day, new day, new day, new day, new day, new day. So if you know it's a new day, lift up your hands, open up your mouth, and say thank you for my new day. Thank you for my new season. Thank you for my new moment. For this is a new season where eyes have not seen, ear have not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of what God is going to do for me in my new day. I can't be lazy. I can't be topsy-turvy. I can't be one of the meal. But I got to be greater in my new day. Greater intercession. Greater prayer. Greater anointing. A double portion. Greater prophecy. Greater healing. In the self-same hour, we will be healed. In the self-same hour, we will be delivered. In the self-same hour, we will be set free. We have graduated into the season. Oh, we have graduated into the season of excellence. This is excellence. And we're going to do it. And we're going to be it. We're not going to be absent. We won't take vacation. Our feelings won't override our faith. For we walk by faith and not by sight. It's a new day. It's a new me. It's a new day. It's a new you. It's a new day. It's a new us. And because God is giving me this new day I'm going to praise him hey! because God has given me this new day we're going to praise him we're going to do everything he's called us to do we're going to witness we're going to evangelize we're going to give we're going to build we're going to live and we will not get tired because we're in our new day. Cap your hands, iron. Cap your hands, iron. Cap your hands, iron. Oh yeah, there's another round. There's another round. And because we're in our new day, the Lord says, you're in your new day. Apostle, the Lord says, take on the mantle. Take on the mantle of the generals and begin to exercise in the areas of demonstration. When you speak, they will be healed. When you prophesy, it will manifest. As your feet trod, you shall have dominion. He said, the mantles of the generals have hit your shoulder and you will soar and you will soar and you will soar says the spirit of the lord because it's your new day he says i've created a clean slate for you and anyone who holds you to your past it's illegal it's voided because god has given you a new day in the name of jesus your heart be cleansed your heart be cleansed we don't owe no one an explanation God says I smile on you and we are proof positive that the hand of the Lord is on you hey 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 so I need the saints to praise God for an apostle that's free praise God for an apostle that's free Free in his emotions, free in his mind, free in the spirit. Yes, Lord. 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 You don't owe anybody an explanation. The Lord says, I vindicated you. That season comes to an end today. The burden be lifted off of your shoulder and the yoke from off of your neck. He calls you son because you walk worthy hey, of the vocation where you are called. And we are your signet that your apostleship is secure in the name of Jesus. Now praise him. Now praise him. Now praise him. Now praise him.